So my name is Lieutenant Colonel Sam Robbins. I am the Houston Recruiting Battalion Commander. I'm responsible for all Army recruiting in Southeast Texas, uh, active duty and Army Reserves. Uh, we have a very daunting task. It's a very uh, important strategic task. And what I mean by that is that to raise an Army, it takes quite a bit of, of folks to do that. The Army's trying to grow. There's a lot of threats uh, potentially out there. And so as we try to grow our army to support our Constitution of the United States, well, we need a tremendous amount of support uh, from the local population. So currently, uh, how, we, how we're doing that is through decentralization. So we have quite a, quite a few recruiters uh, that live in amongst the population out here in Southeast Texas. I have 33 recruiting stations. Uh, so when you see a storefront of a recruiting station, uh, typically that's where we have uh, anywhere from three to eight to ten of my folks in those and they live in, in that population and they go out and they serve uh, the, the population uh, sharing that and educating about the US Army and the availability that it has and so I, a couple facts about that is you know right now currently only 29 percent of our youth from 17 to 24 qualify for the military uh, seven you know, 29%, so less than 3 out of 10. Um, many folks are disqualified because of, of reasons such as um, uh, unable to pass the Armed Services Forces Aptitude Test, the battery. Uh, folks with uh, law violations, um, obesity, ADD on medication, uh, and such. And so it's a tough situation for us because a lot of folks that don't qualify they're already disqualified and we have to uh, find those. So those that, that do qualify are also being um, given op other opportunities such as to go and work for a corporation uh, or go to college. Uh, the, the interesting fact about colleges and, and organizations in going to work is that the U.S. Army actually satisfies all three. We're a very highly educated force. Um, most of our folks go to college, uh, have college degrees, um, we're also, you also get a job, so you're getting a skill, you're learning uh, something that, that you need for your life, that you can go and, and work, and then you're serving in the military. So it, it really scratches all three of the, the main players that high schools are really promoting uh, when it comes to college, career, and military readiness. And so it's very important for us to, to explain that, that only 29% qualify. So the same folks that we're trying to go and, and, and educate about the Army uh, are the ones that the colleges and careers are also doing the same. And so the, the way we do that is through our recruiting force. And so again, they, these are active duty folks that live out uh, in, the, in the population. They live, they rent houses, they buy houses, they eat at the restaurants, they go to your schools, their kids go to the same schools. And we're just out there. Uh, they're trying to share and educate folks about the Army. And so it's, it's, an, it's an incredibly important uh, job. But to serve in the U.S. Army has been an incredible opportunity for me. I've uh, been in over 22 years. Uh, I served uh, as an enlisted soldier first, and then went to officer candidate school and became an officer. And then from there, uh, I uh, loved it. I served uh, with the air defense artillery. And then I, I tried out for special forces to become a Green Beret. I was very fortunate enough to be able to do that. And I've been doing that for, since, uh, for the last 16 years. Currently, as, as the commander of the battalion, here in the recruiting world, uh, I get to use some of the same skills that I've learned in the unconventional force about irregular warfare and about working with populations and helping folks to uh, understand uh, how important it is to, to join a force um, is what I get to do out here now. And so I've gotten to do so many different jobs and tasks that you would never think of that are a lot of times untraditional when you think of just being a soldier. But, what, but it's some incredible benefits that I've received is when I joined the Army, I got the college loan repayment program. So they pay back all my student loans. So all my student debt went to zero. And then while I was in, I, I was able to earn a master's degree for free, paid for by the Army. Uh, and just as many soldiers get to do, uh, you can even uh, take courses while you're in the Army. The Army pays for it while you're in. And then you still have the GI Bill for when you, when you get, actually get out of the Army. And that's even transferable to your children or your spouse, which is also incredible. And then if you enlist out of the state of Texas, 
the state of Texas thing has a thing called the Hazelwood Act, and they also give you another 150 hours of free college. So it's an incredible benefit uh, for joining the Army, for literally giving uh, a four-year enlistment, you know, investing four small years into in your life. So a scenario I love to, sh to share with people is, is an 18-year-old young man or woman who's not 100% sure what they're going to do. They don't have necessarily college paid for. They don't really have a, a job they're really looking into. Um, uh, their parents don't have any money for them to, to, to go to college. And so I think you join the Army. You're 18 years old or 17, 18 years old. Graduate high school. You do a four-year enlistment, so you're 22 when you get out. You're still extremely young. But now you're part of an elite group, part of the one percenters for the rest of your life. You now have literally a four year of college from the federal government sitting there for you. You also, again, if you enlist at Texas, is they give you another four years of free college. So you can be 22, and oh, by the way, while you're in from 18 to 22, what, in your active duty, you can actually take courses, because it's called uh, tuition assistance, where the Army pays you 45, will give you $4,500 a year to take, uh, ar to take college courses while you're in the Army. So a lot of folks can get out at the end of that four years, if, the, if they're a little aggressive, they can actually have an associate's degree while they're working, or even more, some, some do get bachelor's degrees, but they, they get a, some sort of an uh, associate's degree, two years of college done, they're 22 years old, they save their money, because Army has a sort of a 401k type uh, investment plan. So you're saving your money, you're not really spending it, you're super young, you're part of a team now, and you get out and you go and take four years of college, get your degree, or do two years, get your degree, and you can go and get a master's degree as well, and even up to a PhD, all paid for by the U.S. Army. So you're still in your 20s, and you've got all these incredible benefits, and your life is set because you served four years in the Army. Oh, by the way, you also have four years of job experience. So it's an incredible life, uh, and it's been an amazing for me. I've been married for 22 years. I have four children, uh, and I've gotten to go to so many different schools and learn so much, and the people I've gotten to meet, uh, and I'm very thankful for what I've been able to do. So thank you for allowing me to share this message. What's the number one objection anybody has, or parent? So you're going to take my son or daughter away from them, never going to see them again. Or you're going to take them away, and they're going to... They're gonna go. They're gonna go in. They're gonna go into combat. One out of seven jobs in the army is actually combat arms, and just because you're even combat arms doesn't mean everybody's gonna go into combat. Uh, it's just not true. Uh, I drive I-45 every day. Driving that, I just read a, a statistic that 1,200 people die every year on the on the Texas roads. So it, you know, it, it's 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 just an objection that people have because they're just that's all they think of when they think of the military. But they don't think about that life's a risk. Everything's a risk. Um, but the reality is is that the benefits are so amazing and I'm a living testament of 20 years in the military as are hundreds of thousands of folks that have, that have been in the Army for a long time and have, and have had an incredible life. They have to be part of a well-trained force, uh, the most well-trained force in the world. Elite. Elite. If you were to look back, what do you recognize is the big gift that the military gave you? where you are now versus where you might be had it not been for this vehicle? Oh, man, there's so many things. I, mean, I, I think one of the biggest ones is the ability to just the confidence of, I mean, I've been all over the world. I mean, I've been in, you know, 20 different countries. You know, uh, I, I've, I've briefed heads of states, U.S. ambassadors, generals of armies, secretaries of defense. I've trained armies, I've trained in, in multiple different countries. Um, I've you know met incredible people, and, and many people think that the army is a last resort. But I'll tell you right now, the people I've met in, in, in the army across the, across the, uh, the the army in different parts of it, officer and enlisted. Am I kidding me? These, these guys, most of them could have could have done incredible different different things. And for myself, I mean, I was I was studying for my CPA. I was, my goal was to be you know senior partner in an accounting firm. I had a lot of some good job opportunities lined up. But I decided I really wanted to join the army. I feel like that's what the Lord was calling me to, and uh, and it's been an incredible 22 years and the things I got to see. You know, if you look at a lot of our uh, very famous, uh, you know. Let's look at George H. W. Bush, our last president. Mm -hmm. You know, an incredible man who was literally in the Pacific Ocean, just shot down, 
um, and, and did his service and then turned into a president of the United States. I mean, so many folks, uh, very famous, very powerful people, uh, have served in the military in the past. Unfortunately, it's not, it's becoming less. You know, we're smaller, you know, back in World War II, a lot more people served, so, but yeah, I mean, the ability, the confidence of what you learn um, and the people you meet is pretty incredible. I mean, look, I'm sitting in Houston, I'm on the 15th floor looking out, uh, talking to you, and an incredible opportunity uh, being in the Army that a lot of my peers that didn't join the Army, you know, work in the same job over and over in the same city, mm -hmm. and never really, you know, the only time they ever really get to see anything different is when they go on vacation for a week. And I get to live abroad and live and do things that are incredible. Things that other people cannot touch. They're never going to be in right. a circumstance that would allow them exposure to, let never. alone a role to play. Never. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a pretty it awesome is. deal. I, I wish I would have understood as a young person, certainly as a parent, what this offers. Mm -hmm. And just the package that comes with it is untouchable in any other imagined measure, uh, mm -hmm. you know, available. It, it's just not there. Mm -hmm. The number one employer in our country is the government, and they gave you one heck of a deal, yeah. but you gave them something enormous in return. That 1% is what yeah. we needed. Yes, you know, 22 years of investment, right? I could have been doing something else, but I, I would never, I would, if you ask me, there's no way I would change what I've gotten to do. Yeah. You know, I, I, it's been incredible. And, uh, well, some of the stories that you've told about where you've been and the things you were exposed mm -hmm. to, People read, you know, about it, uh, and they see it on, on on the news. You know, you're you're there. You know what the real pulse is. Depicting one of the, some of the challenges, the dilemmas that we face as as, as we're embraced in some crazy situations, not just special forces, but even, you know, the conventional military as well. You know, mm -hmm. when you're working with other other force uh, nations and their their folks and speaking different languages and cultures and so fascinating. And that's that's a huge deal for a lot of people. Uh, that I think love joining about the military is the people you get to meet across the world. You just like you said, you can't buy these experiences. You can only read about them. And, and I am fortunate to be able to be part of some history, historical things that have happened um, and that I'm pretty, you know, pretty proud about. Thank you. So, so I appreciate that, mate. Great, great job, Liza. Thanks for everything. Yes, sir. You got a great team. You always got it. The Lady Lions Club, the AUSA, young lady right here. You got a phenomenal team, sir. So Demo, I appreciate you being here. And, Folks, I get to meet all the time. Great job, brother. Porter High School, representing well. One of the best, man. Cool. It's a community. This is absolutely a community. You are joining. One thing I when I tell every every one of these recruiters or uh, recruits, I say you're joining the team. Forget the forget the. Uh, you, you forgot to mention something. All these young people not only get the GI Bill, they also get the Hazelwood Act. Oh, that's true. So so parents in the state of Texas, which is probably the greatest state in the union. I'm not uh -huh. from Texas, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back here. Me too. Is uh, you, not only they get forty five hundred dollars a year, like he, like he mentioned, for tuition assistance to go to school, you know, to pay for for college. So you can probably get like a associate's degree by the time you do your four year four year degree four year uh, enlistment. Then you got the GI Bill, which is another hundred, basically four years of free college. And then the state of Texas is. You know, got got to go big and bigger than everybody else, right? It gives you another 150 hours of free college, which is also passable to your children. So, by joining the the, uh, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, Marines, or Coast Guard, you've just unlocked about 10 years worth of free education. So, all your peers that he's talking about, they're gonna be in debt, or maybe they got that little $2,000 scholarship that they're all bragging about. You got a 90,000 plus the Hazelwood Act. So, understand education's huge, but I'll tell you. That's not even the biggest benefit. That's right. See, the biggest benefit to me is one thing, honestly, and that's it, and that's being on the team. You are now on the team. You're gonna be a veteran. And in the state of Texas, man, I might as well be president of the United States. I'm, I mean, <laughs> I mean they, they treat you phenomenal in this, in this, in this I, you know, I think yesterday, you know, and I, I make decent money, right, Lieutenant Colonel? I'm rich, right? Like, that's what my, my soldiers tell me, right? So, <laughs> so but still, I'm, I'm wearing my uniform, and I'm down, I'm at a re restaurant, they're trying to like pay me. They're like, there's people competing to pay for my dinner or for my uh, lunch. So this is a great state. You did a great, right thing. You're now going to be a veteran, a veteran. I was at a, a Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce meeting. Huge, one of the largest I ever had. It was, I don't know how many was, how many was there? Who was there? One of those. It was thousands of people there, business leaders in, this, in Hispanic uh, uh, population. And uh, you all heard of Master Smack? Anybody know who Master Smack is? You know, the famous match with Mac, that guy got up and spoke. He could have spoke about anything. That guy got, he could have literally spoke about anything, and, and he's fun to listen to, he's exciting. Guy gives away all that free stuff for the Houston Astros winning. 
And he's up there talking. He, he could have said that he followed the mayor. We had a mayor turn up there. We had the governor was up there. It was incredible. I mean, look, look at all these people. And guess my Master Mac gets up there. What's he talking about? Military service. I was so impressed. He didn't do it, talk about it directly. But he mentioned a guy. And he started talking about this person's career and how they were basically shot down over Pacific Ocean and how they were barely survived, smashed into the water and was in that water for quite a long time and probably should have died. You probably know who this guy is, right? Well, yeah, he became president of the United States and then had another son who was president of the United States and became a very wealthy man, very influential, and has given, he gave his life a service. He's the president of H.W. Bush. But he up there talked about military service. And the whole time listening to that, I was so impressed. Because first of all, he's just an impressive guy. He motivates me. But who also, his nephew is a West Point grad, Army. One of my, one of my friends. Pretty interesting, has learned that recently. But he's down there talking about that. He could have talked about anything. He's talking about this one guy. You think about how President H.W. Bush landed in that water. He could have just died. He could have got eaten by, by a shark. I don't know. But he, you know, he lived, right? And did on and went on for service. The incredible service to the nation. And that that could be one of you right there. You could be, be president sitting right here. I mean, literally, you gotta think about that way. You gotta think about how you're gonna be a veteran. You're already you're on the team. One percent. It's all one percent. You can be around guys, these recruiters, ourselves, you can be one of us. You can do what you can do when once you get in, you can you can go as far as you want to go. Free education, you can change jobs at some point. There's all kinds of it is it's up to you. It's all about you, your work ethic. You know, there's no ceilings anymore. Right. Females can, can get into any job they want. So there is none, zero. Racial, gender, none. You, you can do whatever you want in the military. And, and I'm telling you right now, there's no other organization in the world that can, they can say that to you. But it's the truth. We got, I was just at uh, uh, the Boys and Girls Club of America. Does anybody do Boys and Girls Club in here? But it's not super popular down here in Texas. It's big in the Northeast. But uh, we had a Lieutenant General, African American Lieutenant General, he, he raised in a rough spot in Atlanta, was part of the Boys and Girls Club. And now he's a three-star general. He's the Army's Inspector General. That guy's incredible. He's part of the Hall of Fame of the Boys and Girls Club. That guy came from, from very little and is now a three-star Lieutenant General. Incredible. Stories like that all over the place in the Army and in the, in the Air Force. So just remember that. And as I close, we gotta move on to just another thing. Y'all thought it was Mark come out here and talk about combat and stuff, right? Green Beret stuff. But you know what, that's, that's, that's a small portion. Get to serve y'all and be part of an incredible organization because you are all gonna raise up and, and be the ones that are gonna defend us going forward. But I'll, I'll just say this last thing, and I wanna, I wanna piggyback off of what you said about get to. So get to is super important. I learned that, it's incredible you brought that up, and that makes sense, like-minded people here. But to get to do something. So, you know, a lot of people, they wake up and they, uh, and they have to do something, right? Because most people, who feels, this, who feels when, they, when, when they wake up in the morning, when work is coming, or school is coming up, you have to go, right? <laughs> Many feel that way. How about y'all? Come on, parents. You know, you have to go to work, right? I know it's tough. Jobs are tough. You have to do that. I, I, that's, that's a tough way to live because this is, that'll just train you. And then there's the next level of people, which is I want to. There's a lot of want to people out there. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. I wish I could do that. I want. And, and that's good because you want to do something. You might, it might actually happen. But, if, but on days you don't, you don't want to, you, you get to choose. So one day I don't want to do this, next day I, I want to do this, and it's difficult. But the kind of person I'm, I'm encouraging you all to become is a get-to person, like he said. And you wake up every morning that I get to do this. I get to be a U.S. soldier. I get to serve our country. And it's powerful. You'll get there. So I appreciate everything you guys are doing. It's incredible what you've done, parents. Thank you. Continue to encourage them. And uh, God bless you all. And I think we got now, we're going to pass out some some coins. So I'm going to share a little bit about what the challenge coin is. There's a thousand different people brought up all kinds of versions, but here's here's the way I look at a challenge coin. It's a symbol of really of a, of a unit you're in, and it's a coin that basically says I'm part of this I'm part of this organization, and we just like shiny stuff. So, you know, we got all of our uniforms, so you gotta have one in your pocket too. But we, we give it to our soldiers typically for these days for excellence, for excellence, and that's why you're going to receive one because you're excellent what you're doing. So you'll get one of these and you, you hold it, you hold it true because it's probably gonna be your first one you got. You carry it with you into the, uh, they're also gonna get that. They're also gonna, okay, awesome. So you're gonna carry this into basic training. You're also gonna get a, a U.S. Constitution, a little pocket one. I carry one in my, in my breast pocket every day. And so that, that's important. 
the challenge coin is something you carry on you, so don't, don't be left without it. So if someone else, you can challenge each other, and if, and if you don't have it, then that person's gonna have to buy you a, a Coke or, a, or something like that, right? Yeah, <laughs> like that. Buy you a Coke, yeah, Coke. Yeah. You guys are all under 21, right? Yeah. Okay, so again, appreciate it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be quiet now, so we can get going. We got a lot, to work, a lot of work to do. And so, congratulations again, and congratulations, parents, community as a whole. It takes us all to make this win and do a, and continue our way of life and fulfill this constitution and protect it. Okay, thank you.